Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always, and today we're going to take a look at a very cool new addition to the DCS AV-8B Harrier 2 that came along with the latest open beta update. That of course is the GBU-54 Laser JDAM, which combines the INS GPS guidance of a standard JDAM with the laser guidance of an older style paveway type laser guided bomb. Now these two guidance methods are combined into one weapon to make for an incredibly accurate and incredibly user-friendly weapon to deliver onto the target. The CEP or circular error of probability for a standard JDAM is about 10 yards. And I know a lot of you guys out there, including myself, have always been very, very frustrated when you drop a JDAM onto a vehicle or onto, say, an aircraft parked on the ramp, and it just barely misses right off to the side. Well, that will no longer happen when it comes to adding the laser guidance on top of the GPS guidance with the GBU-54. It also allows us to engage moving targets with a JDAM-type weapon. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and hop in the office and get started, and we'll also continue talking about why this weapon is also more accurate than a standard bang-bang-type guidance LGB, and why it's safer to use in large urban areas that we usually face in the Middle East to this day. So let's go ahead and get started, fellas. Alrighty, fellas, now that we're here in the office, first thing we're going to do, of course, is to throw our Aviate into air to ground master mode. Next, we'll go ahead and bring up our targeting pod on our right hand MFD. We'll slave our TDC to the targeting pod, then we'll bring it out of standby mode, and we'll designate waypoint 1 on our EHSD. So it doesn't matter whether you have your targeting pod on the left MFD or on the right MFD, or you put your source page on the left or on the right, but for me, I tend to always put my targeting pod on the right hand MFD, whether I'm in the F-18, the F-16, or the AV-8B. It's just something standard that I like to do to make things easier for me, So, but that's totally up to you. Next, we're going to control our targeting pod with the OSB buttons. As we've said in other videos about the Harrier, the Marine Corps ran out of money when it came to actually implementing the targeting pod and integrating the targeting pod to the mission computer and HOTAS of our AV-8B, and the only integration that is between the targeting pod and our Harrier itself is the TDC uh, slew control on our throttle, and the actual weapon drop symbology that is imported to the mission computer of our Harrier. Next thing we're going to do is of course take our laser out of safe, go to the laser uh, option rather than the mark or the training. We're going to also do a laser range here to ensure that our aircraft knows the distance between us and the runway at Aleppo airfield. Now we do have a T-55 tank moving down the runway here that we're going to attempt to capture in point track mode as soon as we get a little bit closer and next we're going to go ahead and on our left mfd bring up our stores page and select our laser jdam now we can see j for a jdam kit on a mark 82 with laser guidance at the end so we'll select that guy we'll bring ourselves to master mar arm to arm and we'll select our fuse to instantaneous we also want to double and triple check that our fuse for instant is also duplicated on the physical arming panel down below the left hand MFD. Sometimes this can get a little bit confused if you select your fusing before you turn on master arm and it can be reset on the physical arming panel and your weapon will not drop as when you command it to. So just double and triple check this before you actually get ready to drop your weapon. Next, we're going to go ahead and select our laser guidance code by going display management switch down and we're going to go and select code and we can see that by default it's 1688 so why don't we change that to 1687 just for grins here we'll hit enter and then we're going to go ahead and go back to our targeting pod and it will bring us back to that original place we had so we'll start to go ahead and zoom the pod back out and see if we can find and track that T-55 that is moving down the runway again. We want to attempt to get this guy into a point track mode so that we can engage it as a moving target.
It can be a bit tricky with the pod in the AV-8, as we kind of have to lead it, and it will automatically lock on and throw it into a point track mode. Like I said, the targeting pod here in the AV-8 is probably the hardest to work with in terms of getting things totally and completely reliably set up. Come on. There it goes, perfect. So next thing, all we need to do is go ahead and hit laser range once more to get a good range to that target. And finally, hit the waypoint increment button on your stick for a long press to put that point that the targeting pod is looking at as the point that the INS GPS guidance of our laser JDAM is going to track. Next, we're going to go ahead and fly on out towards that target area that is denoted by that octagon with the dot inside of it where our targeting pod is currently looking. And I'm going to throw on my autopilot to help us out a little bit here. We always want to be checking our targeting pod and ensuring that it is in fact still in point track mode on that target. We can see it's getting a little bit glitchy. All right, so we're coming up. We're gonna drop the weapon at 100%. And that's going to give us our most efficient trajectory for the weapon to come on down to the target. We're going to start firing our laser right away. And to go ahead and pause it here, the reason why we fire the laser right away when, it, when we drop the laser JDAM is the fact that when we press the waypoint increment button, it's loading that specific point where the targeting pod is pointing right now. Even though we have it as, as a point track on a moving target, the GPS INS guidance of the weapon is going to guide it to that exact point where we hit the waypoint increment button. And so because that target is always moving, we want the laser JM to pick up that laser spot as soon as possible so it can start guidance to that laser spot. If we didn't do that, it would actually start to fall into that, that point that we marked with the waypoint increment button for the INS GPS guidance of the bomb. And then if we fire the laser too late, it might not have enough time or enough energy in the weapon itself to make the turn to follow the moving target and hit the moving target. So we can go ahead and unpause it here. And we can see the weapon falling. And one thing that's very interesting about the laser JDAM is the fact that it doesn't use bang bang guidance. So that makes it very, very accurate for a laser-guided weapon, unlike the older Paveway-type laser-guided weapons that do use that older-style bang-bang-type guidance. And it makes it safer in an urban environment because, because of that bang-bang guidance, if the weapon were to lose its spot on the laser and it was in the middle of the high deflection of the control surfaces for that bang bang guidance, it could throw the weapon way long or way short. And we can see in our situation here, if our weapon went way short, it could hit some civilian buildings along the outskirts of the airfield here. And if it threw it way long, it could go into the terminal area of the airport or onto the further the buildings beyond the airport and potentially put civilian lives in danger. So that's also another very interesting kind of plus of the laser guided JDAM. Uh, opposed to a standard LGB, paveway type LGB that uses that older bang bang type guidance. And we can see the weapons coming on down here. Very accurate and very easy descent on into the target area. And that's all she wrote. 
it's a very, very easy weapon to use. As you guys can see, there's none of the following the fall line exactly and using the auto uh, computer to drop the weapon exactly at the right point, right on the fall line. It's simply just put the point for the GPS INS guidance in there with the waypoint increment button, drop the weapon when the ballistic coefficient is at 100%, and then away it goes. You fire the laser and you're good to go. Always make sure you turn your laser off. It's an easy thing to forget here in the AV-8 because everything is controlled by these OSB buttons. We don't want to overheat our laser and break our pod. It's a very, very uh, expensive piece of equipment down there below our AV-8. And the fact that it's non jettisonable so if we overheat our laser and start a fire in that pod, that can lead to a total loss of the aircraft, at which point you would want to jettison the aircraft and float down to the ground in a parachute which we want to ideally avoid. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this is a very, very cool weapon. I hope that it will be in integrated into the arsenals of the DCS F-A-18C and the DCS F-16C at some point. That would be very, very cool to have. And uh, it will definitely be integrated into the F-15E Strike Eagle if the entire USAF arsenal of free fall weapons is going to be implemented like on the real F-15E. So thanks a lot guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. So please give us a like and a subscribe and uh, fly safe out there fellas.